the reason I'm here is because my dad moved to Vegas from Brooklyn mm -hmm. to become a taxi driver in the 80s. Oh, and let me tell oh, you, the, okay. cocaine, back story, back the cocaine was running about as long as this table. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's why I'm here. I'm here because of, because fucking... of cocaine. Because of cocaine. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and these guys. I met my guests at Taverna Costera for Comics and Music Night, and more recently I saw them uh, at Chiba Hut for 420. You can actually watch that video here, when you're done with this one. Uh, their band camp bio modestly calls them a three-piece progressive chiptune band, but their Instagram does a little better with words like synth rock and 8-bit. Um, Twitter and Facebook more accurately call them Las Vegas' only chiptune band, making original music on old Game Boys with special carts while playing guitar, bass, and drums over the chiptune. Uh, I recently reviewed their EP Pixel Paradox. You can check that out as well on the channel. And they have a new one coming up, which we'll be talking about. Please welcome to the channel, Decaying Tigers. Say hi, guys. Hey! hey, hey what's, what's up? up? First, welcome to the channel. Hey, thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Raise them, raise them. Cheers. This cheers. is uh, this is Aguariente, all the way from El Salvador. Cheers. Cheers. Well, hi. Cheers. Not that bad. Ah, not at all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not bad. Tasty. Smooth. <coughs> More red skeleton. Super tasty. Make sure you get the little bit that you left. Uh, Remember, oh. neglect is abuse. Don't abuse your alcohol. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right. Now then, properly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Merchandise. Much. Merch. <laughs> Don't forget. That's right, baby. Please support this yes. guy. Where do he, I get he's, this? He's working hard. Look at you. Where do I get this? You get this at room6.shop. This just in. You can show your support for Room 6 by going to room6.shop after this video. We have tons of merch, including discounted cold weather merch and more. Whatever you need to show your support for local music and Room 6 is there, from shirts to hoodies to mugs to posters to stickers. Whether showing off that you're a patron on our Patreon page with our Two Brains One Bottle shirt, or reminding people to just be amazing, Room6.shop has what you need to be a friend of the channel. Thanks for supporting Room 6. Which is also one of the links down in the description. I've got a, a Room 6 social media link to where you can find Patreon link, where you can find my own music that I made, and Room6.shop, which is where the merch is. All this, any money I make on this channel goes to helping the scene or to help me make better videos. So thank you to all of you that do. Uh, and if you want to be on the channel, by the way, like these schmucks, you, you can also <laughs> you can be on the channel by hitting up my email down in the description or one of the many social media things that I have going on. Uh, I do reviews, I do interviews, I do live streams. It's a, it's a good time. No, they're then. awesome. They're awesome. Hey. Cheers. <clears throat> mm. Now then, right off the bat, for anybody watching this video that doesn't know who Decaying Tigers is, thank you very much, go ahead and introduce yourself, tell them what you do in the band. Uh, I'm Shane, and I play bass and program the Game Boys. Uh, I, <laughs> I play electronic drums. My name is Austin. And I'm Jack, I play guitar, and I also program Game Boys. So, I have, I have a question. Why the name? <laughs> oh, oh! There's a story. There's a there story to that. Hey, actually, we'll do, well, maybe we'll do half and half, because this guy, we're the... Uh, There's the a OG. whole story to this, for sure. So, we'll start halfway. Go ahead. So, sure. when I first met Jack, we were both performing under different names. So I was the uh, Hide Your Tigers, and he was... Daylight of K. And so, uh, our buddy Aaron... From, uh, what band is he? Chocolate, Chocolate Jesus? Jesus, yes. Oh, no way! Yeah. I used yeah. to work with him, I think. Yep, so, cool. Aaron uh, coined the name Decaying Tigers one night while we were, uh... We don't own 50%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Royalties, baby! Yeah. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's where the name came, and we kind of just stuck with it from then. So. Yeah. Just a mashup of a name of two different performing artists well, coming together. I like it because, you you know, it pops you right up on Google. Nice. Well, hey, nobody else has it. Where I think, well, no one really speaking does. of Google stuff, mm -hmm. this guy is our, like our social media. Yeah, I mean, you know, I type in things. <laughs> um, hashtag and, this, and, hashtag you know, that. All that stuff. So, yeah. Um, 
But that's no, like, it is a unique name, and we're you know, yeah. it's it's fun. It's a fun name because it has a fun story. It's mashing up the two different names of two different artists that came together, yeah. playing their different Game Boy styles, and now they're collaborating together. And then they hit me up. They hit me up to play electronic drums over their stuff, and they're like, you know what, new boy, you know what, let's play electric guitar and bass guitar over this stuff too. And we'll see what it sounds like. And so that's kind of what Decaying Tigers is at the moment. And the rest is rock history. You know? And yeah. who knows what it is tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Yes. But that's what it is today. Nice. Um, by the way, stick around. We'll, they're going to be uh, some way, shape, or form. We're going to have some music from them after the interview. Uh, so definitely stick around. And of course, make sure you follow them on their social media down in the description as well. I'll be putting that there. So, why Chiptune? Like, what... what was the process going to that? Yeah, so Chiptune, as far as uh, the music style, it started maybe 12, 13, 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, we got into it, Shane and I. Uh, well, for me, I got into it uh, through a Red Bull competition. I heard this other guy, Henry Homesweets, another uh, Chiptune artist. You sampled a can sound, put it onto the LSDJ card, which is the card that goes in the back of the Game Boy, and uh, he made a song out of the Red Bull can. And uh, I thought it was great. And then the fact wow. that it's portable, so you can take it on the bus, or you can take it to work, or wherever you're going and stuff, or uh, band practice, you could wrap down a riff real quick in the in the cart, um, and then slow it down or speed it up, and just all those factors together is really uh, appealing to me. Yeah. So basically, you can make songs on it mm -hmm. from the ground up, push play, play guitar, play bass, play drums on it. So there you have it. That that leads me to the question of why hardware versus software, because there's chiptune software out there where you literally can just do it all on a computer. Oh, because everyone loves purist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chiptune purist. Yeah, man. I mean, besides purist, everyone loves pushing. You, that you tactile. Know. Look at it. Look at it. Yes. You know, you know, you want to see that on stage. You want to see the game. You hit, you hit play, and you're like, oh, it's tactile. Yeah. People want I get to push yeah, this. I mean, and you know, they're seeing this on stage. It's pretty cool. Right. Let them, let them know that we're actually using Game Boys for this music. They it's, are. I've seen it. I mean, it's way different than with a lot of things that you're seeing out there. So why not? You why got not part, show off that Game Boy. You got part A and you got right. part B. Yep. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, so from there, I actually wanted to say, can you define chip two? And I'll step away while you do your you know, yeah, TED, it's TED talk. making music on old console, video game consoles. That's pretty much what it is, and the and the beauty of it too is you can play all genres of music under, yeah. under the format of chiptune. So there's yeah, this, no limitations. Kind of style you if you want to make music. jazz mm -hmm. and you can interpret jazz into a Game Boy or a C six or or to a Commodore mm -hmm. sixty four. There you go, oh, man. Bring you back memories. If you want to do whatever style. Drum and bass, There's every whatever, kind of style whatever of kind of no, stuff yeah, you want, sure. you, can, it's, you can do it's whatever. Limitless, you yeah, right. But the, what yeah. the pure thing of chiptune is is accessing that chipboard of the console. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a Game Boy. It could be a Nintendo. It can be the Commodore sixty four. It can be an Atari. Right, right. Yeah. As long as you can access the chipboard and manipulate those sounds, that's what chiptune is. We right. happen to use the Game Boy because it's one of the most accessible tools out there. Uh, basically, when they uh, wrote LSDJ, I'm not going to pronounce the gentleman's name who wrote it, because I'd butcher it. But it is a little disc <laughs> jockey. Uh, Johan, <laughs> Johan, but I don't, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name. Yeah, the little last, sound yeah, disc the jockey. I'm sorry, little sound disc jockey. But yeah, yeah, little sound disc jockey. You know, once that got written, uh, it became accessible to the masses. Right. You know, everyone was like, oh, how do I write music on a Commodore? It's very difficult. It's not easy. No. It's easier to write it on the Game Boy because, because, of, that. because of the person that wrote the mm. code for it. For that cart that you yeah. inserted into the Game Boy yeah. itself. I remember uh, having a Commodore 64 because I'm 50 this year. So I'm old. And, uh, I, I, Leisure suit, Larry? No. <laughs> Shout out. No, because when I had it, I was living with parents and, you know. Oh, okay. I of, was course, pre of course. Pre teen. Oh. You well, know, then never mind. Yeah, but, but I remember having this Commodore 64 and a giant book of games you could program into your Commodore 64 that you could play. <laughs> yeah. And not a single one worked. Every single one had some sort of syntax error. <laughs> some kind of weird glitch, <laughs> and, huh? and, and I just remember going, <laughs> and so when I, you started talking about that, I, I flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, uh, speaking of glitches, it happens all the time. 
Yeah, happens on these cars. Yeah, yes. you know when There's these things are and... are more analog than digital. Yeah, <laughs> you know they so. can perform at thirty five degrees though. Yep, they have. Yeah, we did perform at the uh, performance at, test. At, yeah, at, at the, the at Taverna. At, at Taverna on the balcony. It was, it was in it was, the dead winter. Well, electronics like cold. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know what? Oh, oh MacBook. <laughs> oh. MacBook. <laughs> MacBook didn't work. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> as as fun as it is to bash on Apple products, because I've done it on this channel with guests before. Okay. Everything that makes it successful is exactly what makes it dangerous. It's a feature, not a bug. We're we're not here for that. No, we're not. We're <laughs> not. Because no. it would take too long. Yeah, and, and yeah. Jack does digress. Yes. yes. All right. Let's so, let's. Just... All right. It's moving on. It's moving, yes. Yes. moving on. Yes. I, I neglected to mention it during the intro that they are also the official band and presenters of Level Up Expo. Is that still a thing, Yes. Yeah, I mean, we haven't performed there last year because of the pandemic. Thanks, COVID. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So Bummer. we need to go ahead and get back in there. Mm -hmm. And also, they uh, we're talking about doing a special um, band stage. Oh. Okay? That's where we might go in 2023. So... Might take another year, but yeah, eventually we're going to do that. Yeah, we'll be back at level up. Mm -hmm. Right on. Uh, before I move on to any more of my little questions, I want to ask kind of a, a, one of my more usual interview questions, which is, I want to talk musical influence, because nobody grows up hearing chiptune unless they are under 15 years old, you know? <laughs> <Cool>. So <laughs> We all kind of grew up listening to chiptune if you think about it. Oh, hey. True. Uh, hey, a certain age. A certain age. Well, well, hey, if you play Nintendo, you've listened to Chiptune. There you go. So my question to each of you is, what was that earliest musical influence that just got you started on the path of making music before Chiptune came along? Oh, before Chiptune. Or it, even if Chiptune was the very first thing. But what started? What, what was that first song or artist or genre or event that made you go, I want to try to do that? Actually, I'll say something real quick. Actually, Beck. I can see that. Okay. So, I was very young, uh -huh. preteen, must have been early 90s, mid 90s. Shut up. Anyway. Love, love that. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, actually, Beck used a Game Boy. I remember did that. Did he really? I remember he used that. a Game Boy. Yeah, he did, actually. Okay, and I believe it was Lollapalooza, and I don't know what year. <laughs> oh, he used it live. Yes. So, that's why I bring it up, is because Beck. actually, Beck is one of the first people that I, I loved as far as musicians. Uh, electronically and also acoustically, mm -hmm. but he used a Game Boy. Yeah, he used a Game Boy. So you have to look that up. Beck Game Boy, and but trust me, you'll your mind will be blown. What was that like? Your earliest musical influence that you're like, I want to try that, or was there ever other? No, other that was music? just my fir first musical inspiration was Beck. Okay, right. what was I would say that's. I mean, because it's a wide net, you know, he, he went all <laughs> over the map. That's what I'm saying. And that's, and that's right. what Chiptune is also, is that it, uh, you know, it begins at the cloud level. You know, you start <laughs> a little the, bouncy, okay? What is the cloud? I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> you know, you is start, that what I yell at? <laughs> you start a little bouncy. Always. You know, and then you eventually end in the boss level. And that's where our music is. It's yeah. like, it's kind of all over the place. We start soft, but we always end a little bit hard. And you know the level <laughs> everybody hates. The water level. The water yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Screw that cave level too. You know, you're always oh. like, you're like, let's go left. And you're like, no, left <laughs> was actually a lie. <laughs> it was the, a lie. The cake is a lie. Yeah. Uh, next. Um, I would say musically and just performance wise, okay. since I was, you know, a kid. Out. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, uh, no, yeah. You're good. No, you're good. Yeah, throw that cave up there. <laughs> um, it looks good. There it is. Play. <laughs> hey, thanks, Jack. <laughs> I would have to say my musical inspiration since I was a kid um, was, was Michael Jackson. Um, and performance-wise, that's what got me like really into music from I can't even remember when. Um, since I can even remember back. So I would say Michael Jackson. Um, even though I went on to like play punk rock music and all that stuff, um, Michael Jackson was the guy that got me inspired to be a performer and to, to play music, I think. And and I would say that was actually preteen. You know, sorry. I'm, I'm I went, saying. I went, yeah. I went with uh, he asked the question. I'm, I'm saying. No, I'm I, saying that's where yeah. it started for no, me. No, no, I went with teenager. You went with preteen. That is no. That is legit. Uh, yeah. That is a legit answer. I defy you. No matter what genre they are, I defy you. To, to talk to any musician who, and, and say, you know, do you like Michael Jackson? They're going to be like, oh, yeah, totally. 
He was a master oh, no. musician. Man so in the Mirror changed my respect. life. Man in the Mirror. Master musician. I hate that song. <laughs> okay, I have to, I, master I musician, admit. total respect. Yep. Uh, ever since I can remember, that's who got me excited about mm-hmm. music in general. And that carried with me into my teens, into my adult life, and today. For sure. I would say that's mm-hmm. the choice. And uh, for me, uh, I grew up uh, listening to U2. My mom and, uh, and nice. a lot of Hawaiian and reggae music growing up. Nice. That's a mix. And, uh, two and yeah. Music. So that's, that's kind of the, the first musical influences I had. And then uh, as an artist, uh, this band Rufio and Thrice, kind of uh, some post hardcore bands, uh, pop punk bands, kind of got me started playing music. And uh, just kind of everything in between that after up until now, trying to just better myself and, and learn different styles. Right on. Um, I have question here and i can't remember why i wrote it like this but it says manager at zia records question mark (laughs) none of us are the manager no (laughs) yeah no none of us are i mean other than the fact that who wouldn't want to manage right one thing about hold on one thing i can record there (laughs) one thing i can say about zia records is this guy right here jack buys all their vhs tapes so, nice. if you're looking for Just a VHS tell. tape at Zia Records, sorry. That's right. No, 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 sorry, you couldn't buy it, because Jack <laughs> bought them all. Yeah, because like, he'll buy everything. That's right, and you're turning them into carts. I do. I actually, besides the whole decaying tigers, I'm yeah. actually decaying electronics. Yes, yeah, you are. I make VHS tapes and turn them into v, uh, video mixers. Yeah, master glitch nice. artist. Yeah. 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 Or as he calls himself, a circuit vendor. There you go. So yeah, I basically circuit bend stuff. That's my job. As you do. I don't have an actual job anymore. I used to clean carpet, and I <laughs> sold that company. And uh, now I, all I do is sell on Etsy. Make make these yep. dirty mixers. <laughs> yeah. Dirty so mixers. those I, those, uh, those old school analog yeah. glitch mixers. Since the pandemic, I am at home where I should be. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Uh, yes. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, yeah. everybody! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I should not be out in public. Cheers to that. Honestly. <laughs> All right, no, you. Thanks do, for coming you to my house. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, you really do not belong in public. That's true. It's okay. Everybody in the house is boosted. Oh uh, yeah, We're I have three. Shot, so yeah. we're good. Uh, we're good. So I, I have, I have my own personal. It's not so much a request as it is I, something I think you guys should probably think about doing. Bring back the tiger mask. Oh. All right. Masks. I know yes. it's summer. I know it's summer in Vegas. No, I mean it, <laughs> no, is, no, no, no. It, it is a topic that's brought up to yeah. us yep. at performances. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Hey uh-huh. guys, what happened you, to the yeah, mask? I mean, you guys yeah. used to like wear all the this gear, and yep. now you're not." I mean, honestly, it's come down to like a uh, logical, practical thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, um, the gear that we were using was actually causing sound it's interference with our too. instruments. With okay. our LED the lights, lights, the lights themselves um, would actually cause a high frequency pitch, yeah. and run through our amps and then be broadcast so, through their audience. There you go. There you that's go. not good. Exclusive. Yeah. No one got that explanation, but here yeah. on room six, <laughs> that's, that's that's the official explanation of why we're not wearing gear. But it, it's simple. It, that's one of the reasons. But there's yes. other ones that are factored in. But what we're doing is we're. Always progressing, just like our music. Yeah, so you know, we might, might have some kind of costume they in the future, back. is what we're saying. Yeah. There might be something. Yep. Yeah. Like uh, tiger stripes or something. Oh, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, I have. I, hey, how about you? Tattoo, just, just, I will tattoo my whole <laughs> tiger, tiger. How about this? this guy's gonna come. How about this? Send, <laughs> send, <laughs> send room six a message. <laughs> <laughs> comment. Comment, I mean. Dedicated to the band. Uh, I'm going to come up below, with tiger stripes. Comment below on some ideas of what kind of new outfits we should be wearing out there. <laughs> comment below, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, welcome back. <laughs> yes. Tiger uh, stripes. Uh, uh, it is a tiger. Anyway. So. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> sticking with you, okay, we talked about Circuit Bender, basically. Oh, uh, you went from, uh, New York to Las Vegas? Yeah, so, uh, wow. I'm originally from New York, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I moved here when I was about two or three years old. Oh, oh you were moved. Wait, yeah, never mind. You were moved. You were moved. <laughs> so, I'm a Vegas yes. homebody. Oh, once you've been here ten years, you're, you're a native. Like, we've been here uh, about seventeen years, we're yeah. natives. No, I saw it go from about, uh, 60,000 people. Two, two million. So yeah, I'm here for the long haul. There's a, there's a running <laughs> joke. Hey, welcome to Vegas. When you leave, take someone with you. Yeah, <laughs> we appreciate that. We yeah. need the water. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh god. The water level. Yeah, Lake Mead is no longer hold on, a lake. Hold on, hold on. UNLV though. 
You never leave Las Vegas. Hey, that's what it really stands oh, for. Hey, yeah, that's a yeah. Funny, funny little personal story. My sister-in-law went to UNLV. She was living here. My wife and I were here on our second anniversary, kind of, our, like that, that was our honeymoon because our real, our first, we got married, went to IKEA the next day, and then I went to, back to work the next day after that. Like it was so lame. And and then so next year we're like, we're going to, yes. we're going to here 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 here. We're going to end up in Vegas. Your sister is there. She put us up. I have a good time. And standing in line at the Matterhorn at Disneyland before we came to Vegas. My wife and I both had job things on the table that, you know, we could move to Vegas. We could, there's, there's either yeah. horizontal or upward mm. moves. <clears throat> and standing in line, we both looked at each other like, you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. So we both got, we're standing in line on our phones <laughs> calling our bosses like, hey, so yeah, I'm going to move to Vegas. And um, we get here, and we, we, we get, figure it all out. We moved down here, and my sister-in-law lived in one of those t- townhouse places where you have to know somebody who lives there. To kind of get the good word in, you know. Mm. So we get in. Six months later, she moves back to uh, uh, back to uh, Oakland. Mm. It's like you were the reason. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you're here. destiny. <clears throat> but destiny. so that's why the you, you never well, leave Las Vegas isn't quite true. Here, well, we're real. We're real Not quick. always. Not real always. Real quick. The reason I'm here is because my dad moved to Vegas from Brooklyn mm-hmm. to become a taxi driver in the '80s. Oh, and let me tell oh, you, the okay. cocaine back story, back the story. cocaine was running about as long as this table. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's why I'm here. I'm here because of, because of can... cocaine. I do cocaine. There you go. Hold on. Now we're, we're, we're going to get drivers. Now we're going to get Austin. Why is Austin here? Oh, Why no, is Austin no, no. here? I'm not there yet. Oh, no, you're not here yet? I got one more for you. <laughs> I have a ridiculous story. Whatever, whatever. All right. One more for me. I'm Mr. trying to say, I'm trying to one, one more transition. for Mr. Rubenstein. All right, so let's go. Rubenstein. Any, uh, any plans to bring back the chip tune keytar? Oh, okay. That's no, a, that's actually, that's a hot question too. Mm, actually, that's a, this so. This is kind of uh, this might be breaking mm, on yeah, yeah, well, yeah, this, this is breaking, is breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <I> do, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna do that. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, we are a progressive band, and there's no rules. You know, the rules have been shattered with the Game Boy uh, uh, yeah, stigma. So what we're doing is is I might. Jump on some key, mm-hmm. keys, keys. Yeah, the keyboard. And he I, might... I like. I know what you're talking about. No, Keep going. <laughs> Those kind of keys. You know, he's going to be driving a lot. <laughs> and he, he's going to jump on guitar, perhaps. Okay. So that might be in the future. Of that's it. Might be in the future. Uh, double up the Game Boys again and have two two Game are you, Boys. Are around. you going to pull some Rayman Zero and play the bass on the keys? I mean, that's what might be happening. Just I mean, I do have two hands. You that might be happening. Hands. That might be happening. I do have so. two hands. That's breaking. That's definitely breaking news here on Room Six. I don't know why. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> that might be the future of Decaying Tigers. Is that bass is now turning into keys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bass go. players out there. And this guy's playing guitar, and who knows what that kind of sound that is? But you know. But to be honest, tuned, that right? might not even happen. But we don't know yet. That's <laughs> yeah. we don't know. It's a possibility. <laughs> we'll 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 <laughs> no, but. You just never know, right? I love yeah. to build you up and then bring you down, brother. <laughs> so, yeah. Thanks, Jack. We appreciate yeah. that. So, Mr. Grimes. Uh, yeah. Um, you went from LBC to LV, huh? Yeah, I did. Long Beach. I guess oh, you're doing Queen the, Mary and This shit. guy's doing his research. Yeah. yeah. This guy. He's doing his research. This guy's doing his research. He knew he was from Brooklyn. Well, I have been called uh, the next Nardwar. You anyway. know, I mean, he knows I was from Long Beach. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um... I moved from Long Beach to Las Vegas when I was six years old. Oh, so you were moved as well. I was moved as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It was hastily, I would say. Vegas. Um, Oh, really? Yeah, it was kind of haste. Can Um, you talk about why it was such a haste? I mean, we can kind of... I I won't go into details, but... uh, Were there gang colors involved? (laughs) um, More like mafia. Ooh! Um, So remember that question you asked about what's the weirdest thing anybody's... <laughs> you, that admit, just jumps you up. Sorry, um, but it's the truth, you know. You don't admit that you're in the mafia. Yeah. No, no, no one's in the mafia. No one in my family is in the mafia. I just have to say that right now. Not at all. Yeah. The views expressed by guests on Room 6 are not necessarily the views. No, just... Yeah, I mean, can we edit that out? No. <laughs> um, no, but just let, let's just say that there was a situation and my family moved here when I was six years old. Glad to have you. When you leave, take someone with you. Thank you. Do you own any acoustic kits? I did. 
Um, I used to have an acoustic kit. Um, back when I was playing in punk rock bands, right. I used to have an acoustic kit, of course. Um, this is actually kind of a cool story. I'll tell you how I obtained my electronic kit Please, and joined you. Decaying yeah, Tigers. Yeah. This is kind of a, a nifty little story. Weird stories. Um, Every, everything's got a I mean, I think, I think that's why we're yeah. here. That's why I invited you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> You're fine. Um, so, yeah, I used to have acoustic kits. Yeah, definitely. And I would love to have another one. Um, I got rid of my last acoustic kit because I needed the money. Hey. That's really what it was. Yeah. Not going to lie. Um, but that's what it was for at shame. the time. And that's what I had to do. It was, a, back, it, you know, it was a sacrifice, you know? Drums are worth, the acoustics, drums are, the nice ones are worth money, you know, so I had to do it. Yep. Um, and then I kind of stopped playing drums for a while because of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the know? same playing, I have an electric kit, you know? it's not the same. It's not the same. But, especially if you, when you live in a house with people, for sure, certain certain things, you know, yeah. it, it isn't like I make money playing drums, so. No, yeah. yeah, and you couldn't play acoustic set in, a, in an apartment, for example. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, all you hear is, I mean, you can get away with maybe some pads or something, but um, yeah. even then, you know, yeah. the floor or whatever, I don't know, anyway, so, I didn't play acoustic for a while, Okay. and so... Fast forward a while, um, my sister was randomly moving out of state, and I was going to help her move, um, and her husband is a pronounced local punk rock, punk, rock, punk rock drummer in Vegas way back in the day. When you say pronounced? Uh, pronounced as in like, kind of like, pr you know, everyone kind of knew this band. Oh, okay, well known, gotcha. Well known, you know, um, sorry. Um, so yeah. Um, you get name drop. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> All right, reset. <laughs> Shout out to Henry. Just edit, edit. <laughs> yeah, last name was Henry, actually. Are you kidding? No, yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Pulled it out so of my ass. <laughs> it wasn't the first name, but it was the last name. Nice. Um, no, nah, but Benjamin Henry, 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 he was he was in the band uh, The Reform back in the day in the local scene. Played at a bunch of shows at the Huntridge and all that uh, way back in the day when the theater was yeah, active. Back, back when the, the hundreds was worth going to. Hey, yeah. I said it, I said it. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to play there once. That was cool. Um, but anyways, I digress. Uh, so I, there was many years when I didn't play acoustic. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of a sudden I just helped my sister move because she asked me to. And her husband is a drummer. And so I was helping them move and I see this electronic kit and she was like, hey, you don't have to move that. Do you actually just want that for helping us move? And I was like, yeah, that'd be actually pretty cool. Thanks, I'll, sis. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> sis. Um, she was like, yeah, no one even touches it. We bought it for one of our kids, and they don't touch it. So you can have it for helping us move. And I was like, cool. I'm, score. You're ahead. Score. <laughs> I mean, it was an electronic kit. They even had some cords. Uh, quarter inches, and yeah. they had a practice amp with it. Two you know, like yeah, it was whole three weeks later, one or two of them worked, right? It was the whole setup. Hold yeah. on, let me tell the story. Two Just, hold on, let me tell the story. Don't, don't jump ahead. Yeah, Bye. let me tell the story. All right, I'm a good tell a, a teller story here. <laughs> you be teller, I'll be pen. Hey, okay, hey. So here I go with this electronic kit. I bring it home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only a week later, I haven't seen my good old friend Jack for quite some time. We kind of, you know, drifted apart a little bit. That's all right, though. That happens yeah, in life. Yeah, you know, I've known this guy since eighth grade, for crying out loud. Okay? Wow. That's a, that's a long time. That's another yeah. story, actually, how we met. But <laughs> It's a whole 30-minute story right there. <laughs> no, it's not that long. I, I, do have to, I do have to be at work at eight tonight. <laughs> I know. I understand. But we have a story, how we met. It's okay. kind of a funny story. I don't know if you want well, to. Try to hey, go for it. But anyways. That's why you're here. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell this other story, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So I haven't seen Jack for quite some time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I have this drum set set up in my living room because I just obtained it. And I was, like, playing around with it. And I have a brother that also knows my friend Jack because we've been friends. He's been friends with the family for a long time. So Jack, at the time, was car uh, cleaning carpets. And my brother hit him up to clean some upholstery. And so Jack came over and he cleaned my brother's upholstery. And then he came in and he was like, oh, hey, man, I haven't seen you for so long. How's it going? We caught up. You know, we caught up. We kind of, uh, you know, 
buried the hatchet for any little minor issues that we might have had that helped us drift apart. Oh, fuck. You know what I'm saying? Those things happen, <clears throat> but we buried that hatchet. He was like, hey, dude, I see that you have an electronic drum kit set up in the living room. You've been playing drums again? I was like, yeah, I've been playing a while. He's like, dope, dude. Damn drums, man. He was like, dope, dude. I've been playing, <laughs> I've been messing around with some chip tune with this guy right here. Yeah. And we've been thinking about playing some instruments with chip tune. Do you want to jam with us? I was like, dude, that sounds awesome. Yes, I would love to do that. So I started practicing with these guys and it was fun. It was super fun. I missed <laughs> playing. It was, it was fun at first. I'm not going to lie. It was fun at first, right? Because it was, it had been years. Yeah, I'm talking about you, years. And, and you didn't know what they were going to And I didn't know chip tune at the time. Like, I didn't even what know. Is this mess? No, I'm serious. I'm being honest right now. I didn't even know what chip tune was, man. And Jack, but I, <laughs> yeah, but I knew, I knew Jack had done stuff like that right. in the past, but I, I didn't really even know what it was really. I paid no attention to it really. But when they invited me over, it was fun. And I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm like getting back into doing grooves again. But it's like with this video game music, and it, it was way different for me because I was I used to be a punk rock drummer, right, right, you know, and that was what I used to know as a drummer, and I used to play surf rock too as a drummer in a different band. That was my first chops as a drummer was playing surf rock, but then I played punk after that. But anyways, that was like the kind of drummer I was. So when they were playing this chip tune music, I was like, okay, I had to relearn. Not only was I like relearning just how to play drums again in general. Because it had been it had been a while. I mean, you ride a bike, you can ride a bike again after a while, but it's a little rusty. But I was like learning a whole new genre for the first time that I was not even like experienced with at all as a listener. Right. You know. So it was an it was like I was shaky at first, but after the first few practices, I was like, holy shit, this is fucking fun as hell. And we started like. <laughs> just progressing on from that and I started getting my chops back as a drummer and then we all just started progressing together as one since then even with the chip tune and then I started learning about chip tune these guys were teaching about te uh, teaching me about chip tune and uh, I started learning the history of it the other people that contributed to chip tune I was like wow this is a really awesome art of music that's really kind of you know not really discovered in a big way, you know, and that makes sense to me because this is like really super nerdy stuff. We're talking about accessing the chipboard of a console, right. of a retro console video game machine. I mean, this is niche stuff, but I, it was making me feel excited. And, and I never even knew about it before. You and know that's I mean? why we get booked at conventions. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, the best thing you guys did, I think, is is decide, hey, let's try guitar and bass over it as well. Yeah. Because it it suddenly turns it from this to speaking of inspiration. Yeah, this. There's a, another really well known uh, chicken band called Anamanaguchi. Oh, uh, sure. We definitely draw inspiration I mean, from them. Yeah, so. that's the well, standard we them, of this genre. So yeah. we had this guy. We saw him. It was uh, backstage be bar. Right before the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> it was the last great show. Literally the last. Was that the first time they were in Las Vegas? Uh, pretty, no, probably might have been before or something, but yeah, nice. but, but before they were at their status, though. Yeah, right, right. before the pandemic, they they fucking hit the stage at Triple B's, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a elevating moment in my <laughs> yeah. lifetime. Only because I was like, I was like, I am floating. Like that cloud level Jack was talking about. Yeah, I was like, I was like that cloud level. I am living it. <laughs> but you know, that's what happens when you watch a band that you want to not only emulate but you have respect and you've been watching for 10 years and you're like okay 10 years here i'm watching you you yeah. know so it's uh definitely it was inspiring right on hey you know but you don't actually like know them right no i mean at this point i mean maybe we <laughs> no. can google them and be like hey bro remember me and he might be like hey man i remember you kind of but then no, they, they probably wouldn't reply though <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they're pretty busy yeah, yeah, they're actually touring and stuff, and yeah. which we aspire to do someday. I could see you touring on with this. I totally see could see it, and, and it'd be a lot easier to well, tour your, this than it would be a traditional. I mean, uh, I can throw my electronic drums in a duffel bag. Yeah, because the whole rack just kind of. Yeah, no, together. no, no. I can take yeah. it apart. 
I well that too. But no, I, mean, I, but I have a, a, a minivan that I've taken my electronic drums and yes, just kind of fold them in for sure. Put them right in the back. No, yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. Um, it is cool. Moving on from from that. You're a wrestling ref for FSW? <laughs> yes, I was. Uh, oh, you were. Okay. I was. Oh. Um. <laughs> anyway. No, no, no. We um, might still have opportunities. <laughs> well, the reason I bring that up is um, I've I've interviewed the uh, front man for Dim, uh, Death in Motion. Yeah, who, Wes. Wes. So you know, <laughs> yeah, of course. Wrestling, you know, he has a whole wrestling Wes. thing going too. I, I love was Wes. wondering if you'd ever worked with him in, in either wrestling or. Of or course, music. I've I've refereed many of Wes's matches. I thought I'd seen something many. Like that. Many of matches over the years. Um, I got into wrestling. We lost. Well, uh, this guy's over here. I know. Um, but uh, no, I I got involved with wrestling back in uh, 2012, um, and uh, I joined a wrestling school called Future Stars of Wrestling. Cheap plug. They are an amazing wrestling school. If you ever aspire to be a part of the wrestling business, I implore you to join. Future Stars of Wrestling, you can reach out to them on Facebook or Instagram or uh, futurestarsofwrestling.com. Okay, they're the top-notch wrestling school in Las Vegas. I joined them that many years ago just to be a referee. Um, I had my personal reasons why I did. Um, I was like uh, 31 at the time, just to say, you know, a little bit older, um, but it got me in good shape. I got active, I lost a lot of weight, it was awesome, and, um, and it was an, an amazing experience to be a part of that. Um, I did it for many years. Mm -hmm. I got to, uh, of course, when I was a child, as a kid, growing up, that was something I bonded with my grandmother. We watched wrestling. And, uh, wait, 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 back up. <laughs> what's that? Your grandma used to watch wrestling? Oh, oh. yeah, man. Um, She's from the south, okay. Really? Oh, grandpa. Okay, okay my grandmother. Yeah, my grandmother's from the south. Okay, she's from the south. She loved her wrestling. <laughs> to to um, me, that's right up there with my eighty-seven-year-old mother, who knows like all the football teams right. and yeah. will tell you all about you know. And, and you know, don't go. I, no, I can't talk grandpa, right now. I'm watching football. My grandpa used to do the Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. There you go. Yeah. No, but yeah, my grandmother loved wrestling. And for some weird reason, I was the only one that gravitated to that as well with her. And she was like, that was like, it turned into like just me and her bonding thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my inspiration, of course, to even be into the uh, into pro wrestling. It's great theatrics. Um, I was always into it. Yeah, I always got drawn to it just for the theatrics of it. Um, it's a spectator thing. And there's a lot of dramatics. I always were, was drawn to that. So as an adult later in life, um, I was drawn to it just to do something different, something outside of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. um, something to challenge myself, and maybe to get a little bit more active, like I was saying a little right. bit ago, to lose some weight. And uh, Was this before Decaying Tigers? Or oh, way before. Way before. Okay, so he went from black and white stripes to... Oh, no, 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 no. No, there was a time when there it was, was simultaneously time. happening. There was. There was a time yes. where he had his wrestling... A level up, actually, right? Where, yeah, yeah, we actually did level up where <laughs> yes. I performed with the Decaying Tigers and then I ref refereed a wrestling match right no, after. No, no, it was first nice. versus. No, it was... Is he had a wrestling match and oh, then he back. jumped out of the ring oh, that's and what jumped was. on the drums with his... Full yes, gear. I was in rep gear. Talents, right? And he was like, he was like, all right, let's go. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt because and if you're in the, the crowd mask, for if you were in the crowd and you saw the whole thing transpire, you'd be like, what am I seeing? Right yeah, now? yeah, no. Basically, my wrestling friends is the only ones that kind of saw that transition. To right. be honest with you, I would say maybe they were the only ones that and saw us. that, and, <laughs> and, and, and yeah. them, of course. But there was a few select friends that saw that. That's but that crazy. was kind of fun. It was fun. I literally did go from the wrestling ring. I remember now. Yeah. It was the other way around. Grab your sticks. Yeah, I, I went the other way around. I grabbed my sticks, left the wrestling ring at the Level Up Expo, and got on the drum set, and we played a set in my ref gear. I yeah. threw on a uh, threw on a, um, a tiger mask. A wrestling. Think, which is a wrestler. <laughs> it wasn't a literal tiger mask. Yeah. It's a wrestler named Tiger Mask. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I put his mask on to pay tribute to him because he's an amazing wrestler. Google him on YouTube. All right, that doesn't make sense. Search him on YouTube. Google. Yeah, he just said that. Yeah, Google him on YouTube. Yeah, I did. I, I, I swear, so wait, he's on. only had, had like two drinks. I think that answered the question, though. 
I don't know about this guy, though. I don't know about this guy. I think that answered the question. Yes, that answered the question nicely. All right. Um, before we move on to Shane, we're going to take a quick booze break because I'm empty. Booze break! We're back, and we're finishing off four asses from El Salvador. Stuff is great. Yes. Ziggy zaga, ziggy zaga. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's a lot smoother the second time. Yeah. <laughs> And he's trying it with a lime. Look at him. Oh, look at that. A little lime action. I'm trying it with some... Ooh, Evan Williams. That's a nice chaser. Yeah. Yeah, yeah chaser shot from, with a shot. I went from Canadian whiskey to uh, Kentucky bourbon. Hey. <laughs> Unity. Yeah, right. Mr. Shirley. Yes. Your parents hated you, didn't they? No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mr. Shirley. If Shane, you're Shane Shirley. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so, famous name. so Shane, you also play right. within the with uh, within the cochlea and Lance Lions, right? Or you did? Uh, with used to be within within the cochlea. That band is no longer together. Uh, everybody's doing their own thing. And Lance Lions is now Trivial Menace. Oh, new name. New name. Yep. New name and, alert. Uh, yep. Yeah, so, you hey, heard it. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Hey, hey, this you know, is breaking news too. Maybe breaking, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's out there. Already. No, it's out there. It's out there. <laughs> it's out there. Okay, never it's mind. Been, it's it been is been out weeks. there. It's been local? two weeks. Yeah. Well, you know if they want an interview or a review, hey, stay tuned for Trivial Menace. Trivial Menace up next. No, <laughs> not up next. Well, hey, we don't know if they're up next, but hey, stay tuned. Maybe, maybe call the guys and say, hey. <laughs> yeah, you might want to talk to them first, Shane. <laughs> that DM, mother. DM. But, Follow, yeah, be anyways. sure to follow Trivial Menace for sure on social medias because it's a new name. They need people to start following them because maybe they're following <clears throat> LTL still. Follow, there's, there's, follow many laughs, the, there's many laughs to lions out there and, and saying the name in the bar is, is hard to keep in your mind. And Trivial Menace just kind of sucks so that's what we chose for that. I band. was going to say, lamps, I, I saw more than one Lance to Lions. There's many Lamps to Lions. Yeah. Yeah. Interview's going great. But yes, so, yes, uh, I'm in both of those bands. So um, <laughs> we're off the rails here. I, I wanted to talk. This is my favorite interview. So. Uh, I wanted to talk about Red Light Taxi and oh, their MySpace yes. page. Wow, You're st they're still uh, they have a MySpace page. Can you access it? Uh, I can't. I can't because you have to sign into MySpace, and I don't remember. Oh, oh, like, oh, oh, just oh, like me, yeah. I can't remember my password either. The music on it? I, I, I didn't log in. Oh, I was just like, they got a MySpace page on Yeah, no, we did have a MySpace on your Facebook page. It might still be out there. If yeah. anybody can get on it and get the music off it and send it to me, that'd be great. Yeah, uh, I'd love look to hear this it. guy up. Yeah, look so this guy up. Apparently, wanted... this guy's famous and we don't even know it. <laughs> no, he's just in a lot of bands. Anyway, <laughs> I want to talk to you about Hydra Tigers. Look, look, Hydra Tigers. Uh, so, the name came from uh, I was watching the news, and I believe it was. Uh, is that movie? There's it it a certain movie, and the guy stole a tiger or something, and uh, the, the news guy was like, "Hide your tigers." It's <laughs> okay. so like, oh, that'll stick. So I just started using that. Uh, I used that name in Hawaii when I performed chip tune out there. I was going to say, you moved from Hawaii to Las Vegas, the Ninth Island. Yes. Did you know that there are more native-born Hawaiians in Las Vegas than there are in the islands? Dang! I did not. Know That's that. amazing. Well, yeah. there you go. New. I knew breaking a lot of Hawaiians. Hawaiian was breaking right. news! My second, breaking news! Second Hawaiian native in a row that didn't know that fact. I feel proud. Yeah, no, it's a it's a huge it's a big thing. This is the ninth island for a reason, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, man. I've heard I've heard that a lot of yes. A lot of them <laughs> have moved here. Him good the English speak. <laughs> Whoops. So um but, that came out weird. It's all good. That, that's it's that's internet gold. So <laughs> yes. Um, but I wanted to say, in in Hawaii, what, well, first of all, did, where in the state did you? Live? Uh, I grew up in Kona on the Big Island. Yeah. Right on. Um, well, my favorite place is personally on Maui in uh, Honokawaii. We uh, there's a timeshare that my, my father in law is off camera. That he has a timeshare, and every now and like every so often through the years, we'll go there for a week, and it's, suddenly it's just like it takes like two days, and then you just realize, oh yeah. Yeah. Slow down, bro. Let's hit the mainland. Yeah. And, and every like the fastest you can go is 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you lane roads. You walk yeah. down to the farmer's market and yep. la, la, you go to Lahaina. Like Lahaina is going to out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what was it like musically? What were you doing in Hawaii before you came out here? Oh, uh, so I was in Red Light Taxi and uh, that was a pop punk kind of style band. And uh, I was doing the chip tune Hide Your Tigers. There was a small local scene of uh, musicians that played metal music and punk music and all that kind of stuff. So we definitely, it was supported. In um, Hawaii? In Hawaii, yeah. You never hear about metal in Hawaii. Yeah. Like, oh, there's great ever. metal bands out there. I imagine. Yeah. Because I, I, I picture living on an island, 
there's that kind of iconoclastic thing, like living in, say, Norway, or, you know, and they have metal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They know their metal. Um, and it's just one of those, we have nothing else to do. We can either play Jack Johnson or we can play the heavy. Yeah. Yeah, so. But you're not, you're not getting to play the tourist bars with that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, there, there's definitely a, there's, when I was growing up there, there was bars to play and a little bandstands and stuff around town. And it was great. It was, I had a great time. Yeah. Right on. Um, last but not least, did you ever figure out how to stop the fire alarm chirp? Oh, the Jack's house or my house? I don't know. You posted both it. houses. Oh man, you no. posted about a fire alarm truck. Oh yeah, going yeah, uh, yeah. So I had a bunch of fire. I dug a little in too deep. I, I, I yeah, dug a little too deep. Yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta really think about this one. But yeah, yeah. Sean Evans is my patron. My patronus. I had some uh, some definite fire alarm issues at my house. <laughs> yes, some, uh, I mean you could talk about my tax evaders. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hey, you know, that's how yeah. they... No, no, definitely edit that part That's out. how they hey, got that freaking Al, Al Capone yeah. about the hey, mafia. Hey, chill, Jack. Chill. <laughs> no, I can pay my taxes. I don't care. I'm just joking. Okay, well, okay. be careful now. <laughs> Yes. I paid two thousand sure dollars. The views expressed by Room Six guests, not necessarily those. <laughs> I paid two thousand dollars this year. I'm okay, Jack, you're good. You're good. You're good. I know. It's all right. the Mexican sales. So right. Yeah. Right on. All right, cool. Good news. We're almost done. <laughs> so actually, we're gonna go back to uh, kind of. I have I have a usual interview question. I hate, I apologize in advance, but I have to ask this. Just, because it's important that musicians have this answer ready. How would you define your musical style? Wait a minute. Put down more flap. Just kidding. Elevator. Chicken. <laughs> An adventure <laughs> for a lifetime. Oh yes. Wow. Future music. That's a bit grandiose and hard to quantify, but go for it, sure. <laughs> I don't know. A, really a chiptune adventure for a lifetime. <laughs> there you go. Use that. Check one. <laughs> yep, that's what you get. <laughs> you know? It's you know, choose right, what it you It could want. be the future of music. Who knows? Right you know, it's, um, it's, the, it's, other, the other usual yeah. interview question I like to ask is... Let's pretend... Normally, I, I say, hey, let's talk about gear, but I, I know what your gear is. You know, we... It's, it's, we it's, it a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but how? let's pretend we're talking to little you. Okay? Mm, mm, oh, I already spoke. I, I had to so, <laughs> What we're doing is we're talking to new musicians. Uh -huh. Especially new musicians that maybe are interested in, in chiptune and 8-bit and, and all that jazz. And basically, they go, how do I be like you? So, this camera, this camera, this camera. So, go ahead and take your turns and say... What you, There's two different routes. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not, I'm not, Jack, I, I, ain't, chill. I ain't done yet, Jack. Yeah, okay, so, chill. <laughs> I thought you were talking. Here's what, here's well, what I want you to have. Here's what I want you to do. What is one thing that you wish somebody had told you before you got into playing music? And don't say change your strings. Uh, right. Practice and be very patient with yourself. Because it's going to take a lot of time to, to get where you want to get. Um, or maybe not, you know, maybe you're a prodigy, but anyways, just practice and practice and practice and practice. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I gotta say. Okay, so there's two ways of getting into chiptune. Ready? First way, the easiest way is get on your computer. Software. And go on to bgb.com and download the software for that program, which is a Game Boy emulator. Yes. Then what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna go to LSDJ. Dot com, which is little sound disc jockey dot com. And what you're going to do is you're going to download that program for perhaps two to five dollars. It also Whatever helps if you have a Game Boy for it. No, yeah. no, 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 no. This is all computer, baby. This is all. Oh, you're saying don't do like you do? No, this is all computer, baby. So, anyways, what we're going to do is. Did Nick Cage just come in my kitchen? No, no, no. I think he's talking about just a computer program yeah. right here. This is the easy part. He's talking about the easy he's part. He's malfunctioning. This is the most easy part. He's talking about what? What? The computer program costs yes, $2 to $5? Yes. yes. The easy. most easiest way to do it is BGB. Yes, donate to Johan. Yes! Please. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's open source. Yep. So, yes. You can download. You can edit. 
<laughs> you can edit that whatever you want. Oh no, that's that, that exactly might, like I that. Edit is the I might throw in some in case. I don't know. What he's trying to say is you can get the program from a uh, little <laughs> uh, yeah, to a donation. Yeah. And then uh, you can either try it out on BGB, which is the emulator on your computer, or you can download it into the LSDJ ROM. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, in the words of Ross from Friends, we're gonna pivot. Okay. To you, what what do you wish someone had told you before you yeah, started you getting into music? Oh man, um, I would have to say uh, that you should definitely have fun. That's my number one thing. Um, if you're not having fun playing music then why are you playing music? <laughs> because if you have fun playing music, then you're motivated to play more music and get better and get better and better. And that's just from being interested in having fun. And that's exactly what we want to do as humans. So, I mean, if that's your thing, we all have our thing, right? Maybe playing music isn't fun. Then I guess music isn't your thing. Yeah, but if you have fun playing music, then music is definitely your thing, and you should definitely get that to motivate you to get better. So I would say that is my advice to all you young musicians out there is have fun. It's not a chore. And honestly, that's good advice for all the musicians, especially the ones who have been doing it day in and day out for years, especially the ones who also have that day job of doing cover songs. Right. Who have yeah. to play the music they don't necessarily like, but right. that's what that pays the bills. Yeah. Try to have fun with it because, yeah. in the words of Roy Bennett, how much you can learn when you fail determines how far you will go into achieving your goals. That's it. Stole that off his. Stole that page. That's it. Yep. And that, oh, that was my quote. Yeah, that was your quote. I mean, that I quoted. You, you posted it on your Facebook page. I posted page. that yes. quote. I mean, that, uh-huh. makes, that's, that, that makes sense to me. But also, honestly, if you, anybody who's lived in Vegas for a while has seen the dead eye thousand yard stare of a cover band that's just, they're so over Brown Eyed Girl and they're so over Freebird and all those well, other songs. And, that's and, not us. No. <laughs> it, having fun on stage instantly makes you so much more watchable from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Instantly makes people say, oh, they're having fun. That makes me want to have fun. Yep. I want to relive this fun. I want to buy their merch. You know, having fun is fun. Yeah, and go to low. You know what? Go to live shows. Going that one. Thanks to MTV suddenly not having music television, music videos, you don't have that visual so much with music as you do anymore. Unless maybe they made a TikTok or something. Going to a live show, you're going to have visuals with the songs, especially when you hear the studio version. You're like, oh, now I can hear everything because mm-hmm. it was in a bar and right. You know, so, right. So the reason we also make this music mm-hmm. is because there's no one really. A hundred percent making it like we do, you know, and it's it's basically we we're, we're like okay we want this like kind of like dancey pop punk mm-hmm. style. There's really nobody for us to be like oh we're gonna copy you, mm-hmm. you know. So like we hey, but well, I'm just saying right now it would be cool if someone did because then yeah. we can play shows <laughs> with you. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, yeah. Out there in Vegas. please yeah. be inspired by us and create your own yeah. chip tune music I've, because we want to play a show with you. Yeah, yeah. I've said I just have before. to add that. Sorry. No no, 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 no. I've said it before, and I will say it again. When the Canadian Tigers plays a show, regardless of who else is on the bill, they're different, and yet they somehow fit. Mm. And what more can you ask? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Know? you. Um, before we get out of here, we've been a little remiss. We went down a few too many rabbit holes. We didn't talk about your upcoming EP. Oh yeah. Your upcoming well, yeah. Is, it's an EP, right? And you know what? I've talked yeah, too much. Yeah. Six tracks. Austin, Shane talked too much. Austin needs to talk this shit. Zip six tracks. <laughs> six tracks makes it an EP, yes. Oh, what, <laughs> so what, everybody, hold on, is that really what it is? What really is the threshold? Is? What is the threshold? Of I believe three. three. I honestly, More than three, I think? I believe seven is full album. Oh, seven or eight. Okay. Like oh, I, 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 I put out two eight-song albums. I'm calling them full albums. Yeah. I'm down to fight you for the end right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, real quick. What is the name of the EP? Oh, Max yeah. Bet. Are you serious? That's the name of this EP. is called Max Bet. You know why? Vegas, maybe. Vegas. Yes, um, there, yes. There might be a little story there, behind it. Actually, you know, you, know, you uh, could also go all in. You know, um, the album is named Max Bet. There's a song on the album called Max Bet. Well, no, that makes more sense. Yes. You know? It's so, all, yeah. um, and it is based on a true story. True story, eh? Yeah. The names have changed to protect the identity of the innocent. Okay? Yes. Alright, just keep that in mind. To protect the tax. Alright, when you listen to that song, (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> Once again, I'll go turtle style. <laughs> so I definitely, definitely, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, ring the bell. You'll be notified when I do my review of that video. Uh, and, and also, you'll be you know notified when I do all the other stuff. And Max Bet coming soon. Max Bet on all platforms. Don't streaming. pick the same four numbers for your uh, punch card. Yeah, don't do you know, that. You know, you're make not, a unique they, they pin won't code. Punch you anymore. Oh. Yeah, you make you make a unique pin code, and then you max bet all your money. Just wait away. for you to be done. Just, okay. just like this guy, just right here. Just right. like this guy. That's how you win money: is you max bet. Just right on. a secret for all of you out there. But yes, all streaming platforms available on June twenty fourth. You might it, it might have already been happening since you've seen this episode. Actually, I believe what's going to happen. You is never this, know. This interview will come out, and then the review will come out, and the EP will come out. There it is. So definitely. Consider subscribing and definitely follow them so you'll be up to up to breast <laughs> up to date on <laughs> on what's going on with them. Uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, from here we're gonna go ahead and uh, get some music from you guys in one Woo! way, shape, or form. Yes. Thank you for watching, and Thank we'll see you, you up so the much. stairs in uh, room six. I think. Yes. Yep. Can we get some? Yeah. Oh. Get your mugs up. Oh, sorry. Jeez. Room six. Jeez. Seriously though, thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you, and I know they appreciate. All of their fans. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. There's always one. <laughs>
I want to thank Duquesne Tigers for coming on. It was a great interview, a great performance of whatever the heck we watched. In the meantime, if you want to know more about them, please follow their social media down in the description. If you want to support the channel, like I said, please consider maybe buying some merch on room6.shop, become a patron on patreon.com forward slash room6, or I don't know, how about come on the show? Hey! In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you want to subscribe, really appreciate you. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye. Now say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fading out on that.